Mark here, and today we're going to be looking at the Hick Micro Eco Series E01 thermal imaging camera. That's a mouthful. Uh, so we have the box here. I have actually already opened it up. I played around with it. Can't resist. Sorry. Uh, so we uh, we open the box here, and we have our manuals and some stickers. Uh, we even have the calibration certificate, which is always important when you're buying a piece of equipment like this. Now, I am a um, hazardous materials inspector uh, with a company during my day hours, and I look for mold and asbestos primarily. Of course, there is no piece of equipment that will tell you where mold and asbestos is. You have to use uh, a little bit of, uh, or, or mold, nothing for asbestos. If there is, if you do come up with a piece of equipment, I would love to have one of those. Uh, this can aid me in my job in looking for sources of moisture uh, due to evaporative cooling. Uh, you can see insulation missing, which uh, I'll get to in a little bit. I uh, stumbled across a few other issues that normally you wouldn't find. So when we open this up here, foam packed, we get the IR camera itself. Now this is the E02. There's an E01. Uh, the main difference is uh, the E02 actually has two cameras. So it has a thermal imaging camera and then it has what they call a vision camera, which is a standard camera. Uh, you can go into a few different modes, which we'll also get to. Uh, there's a vision where it overlaps the two, so it gives you a little bit more contrast. You can kind of see what you're looking at. Uh, so first of all, you get the camera, uh, you get a box here, and in this box you'll have uh, a charger. So this is a USB-C to USB-C charger, uh, but what they've done here is they've got a little, nice little adapter. Uh, so a USB-C female to USB-A male. So in this day and age with USB-C, if you've got a USB-C charger, you can just uh, plug that right into the charger. And then of course this takes a USB-C port on the back here. This connects to your computer if you're going to be doing anything with their analyzing app, uh, which they do have some PC apps for this, uh, this unit here. Uh, it also, of course, is used for charging. Uh, so this little adapter is just uh, stuck on there, and you can click it back on, and there we go. We have a USB-A to USB-C, or a USB-C to USB-C. So we'll boot this up, and it actually doesn't take very long to boot up. Uh, here we go. There it is. You can actually see where my arm was resting on the table. Uh, we've got our heat register there. Uh, you can see my network attached storage that's over there giving off some heat. I've got two of them. Uh, so we'll jump into the menu here and to do this you just hit your power button. So the first one is your albums and you can just go into, they're done by, uh, by month. Uh, you can scroll through and select there's a good one there. So this is where I ran into um, uh, an issue in a wall at a, at a recent inspection. So you can see that blue area right there. If we go to the next page, this is the actual photo of that wall. And, you know, you'd be none the wiser looking at that wall unless you took the thermal imaging camera. And you can clearly see there is missing insulation in this 40-year-old built house. So it's been like this for some time. Uh, so we hit the back button to go back through into the main menu here. Uh, the, the emissivity, if I'm saying that, uh, it's a tough word to... Emissivity is basically a... Uh, each type, different type of material will give off different types of energy or amounts of energy. So by default, it's set at 0.97. Uh, I would just recommend leaving this as the default. You can fine tweak it depending on what you're using it for. Uh, but this one should probably just be left as is. You can do a little bit more research on what exactly this means. And it does have a few different presets in here. So we'll go back to the menu. We'll go down to distance. I've got the distance here set at 2 meters. 
uh, which is um, which can be adjusted. I think it comes by default at about a half a meter. So I've been using this as at about a two meter distance. So I figured that's probably where I want that set. Uh, we go back down to display setting and here if you're not using certain screens you can actually shut them off so you don't have to scroll through all of them uh, and then of course the unit of measure which is degrees celsius is down in the bottom now we'll go back and we'll go down into the image settings uh, here if we select image mode you will see you can look at it as thermal as fusion or visual. So the thermal and visual are the two different cameras. I've got it set at fusion which actually merges the two images together, shows you the thermal image and then shows you outlines of items that you may be uh, uh, maybe testing or measuring. It's just a little bit clearer. I find it a little easier but you can fine-tune that in here. Uh, we go down to parallax correction, uh, and this is going to be your correction. Uh, I've set that at uh, uh, one and a half meter plus, and that basically uh, uh, corrects the two cameras. So if your image isn't quite lining up, you can go and you can change that and you can adjust it to better fit uh, your needs and your style. So going back, we get into our color distribution, which is either histogram or linear. And we go two out of there. Now this is the Super IR. Now the Super IR will upscale the image to 240 by 240 pixels. So of course, uh, I want that. I want a, a nice clear image. Uh, we go down to the palette, palettes. You can select the different palettes uh, as to what you like, what you prefer. I use the rainbow palette. You can also toggle between these when you uh, are viewing the screen by pressing uh, the up and down arrows, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, getting back out of here, we go down to the level and span. And here, what this means, it's set to auto right now, which basically shows the high and lows of, the, of what you're viewing on the screen. If you go in here, uh, and if you select this, and you go to manual, you can select parameters, and you can adjust the parameters. There's, uh, on the top here, it says 21.1 degrees, and on the bottom here, it says 17.2. So this is gonna be a static number between those, and it's gonna correspond to what that is on that scale. But if something is higher than 21 degrees, it's still only gonna show as white. So uh, you can adjust that. If we move that back to the auto and we get completely out of here, you can now see uh, 20, the top number is 23 degrees, 20, and as I move it up, we're gonna see that the scale actually shifts and the table turns from yellow to blue because it's adjusting the scale according to what it's seeing. Uh, so going back in here, if we go back down to that setting and we go level and span, uh, so that's how you get to that. Uh, then you go down to the alarm settings, which you can set it manually here. Uh, you can turn it on, you can set alarm levels. If uh, something you're testing is, uh, you don't want it to get a, above a certain temperature, uh, you can go ahead and turn that on and you can make your alarm thresholds here. Uh, so we'll turn that off. Uh, I don't need any alarm thresholds. Uh, your temperature range, uh, this will do between minus 20 and 400 degrees Celsius. Uh, so I've got the scale between minus 20 and 150, which is where I would be, uh, I would be working this piece of equipment. So we're going to leave that as that. Uh, then we go into our capture mode. So capture mode is capturing one image. Uh, scheduled capture, uh, you can have it capture at random intervals. Uh, and I've turned on to save visual image as well, which I showed you in that last screen where I have my thermal image camera picture, as well as the regular visual picture. Uh, it's just to know what I'm looking at because it may get a little confusing if you're looking at a thermal image and you're trying to get an idea as to how that works. 
Uh, so we go back out of there and we go into the final menu, which is more settings. And this, you can tweak it to your pr uh, preference. You can turn the laser on. It does have a laser, so it points to the center of the image of where it's being tested. Uh, your auto power off, your auto sleep. Uh, about and you get into uh, formatting storage save logs I don't have save logs turned on and then of course finally uh, format your storage device and restore it um, there is a question that I did see about how to change your language uh, this is the screen right down here at the bottom where you would change your language so that's a quick look at the Hikmicro E02 thermal imaging camera. Uh, I have, of course, uh, had a, a great use for it during my work as a mold inspector. Uh, I have moisture meters, I have laser particle testing equipment, I have uh, humidity monitoring systems, but I don't have a thermal imaging camera, which does add a whole new level to my inspections. And I'm actually finding things I wouldn't have found otherwise. Uh, so it does work well for my work. I have used it around the house too. Uh, why not? We just installed a 10.5 kilowatt la uh, laser. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not there yet. A solar array in our backyard here on the farm. Uh, so we've been adding insulation to the attic, bringing it up to better insulation values. And of course, we all want to be more energy efficient. Uh, so I took a picture at the back door and I can see some heat loss out of there. It was a simple fix. It was just a matter of adjusting the seals on the door to correct the issue. Um, but, um, but yeah, if you are interested in this, they currently have a Black Friday a deal on now. Today is actually Black Friday. Happy Thanksgiving to our American neighbors to the south. Uh, and I believe the sale goes on till December 2nd. If you're watching this video after December 2nd, or after 2024, check out their uh, link down in the description. Go to their website. Uh, they often have different sales on at different times of the year, like possibly Boxing Day coming up. So I'll put a link down in the description so you can head over and check that out. If you have any questions whatsoever on this, feel free, leave them down in the comments, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a good one.